You're listening to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, dedicated to the 40-plus community. Join us as we discuss the truth about fitness and health using science, reason, and the experiences of our host and content experts. Welcome to the 40 Fit Nation. Well, hey guys, welcome back to 40 Fit Radio and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation. We've got a great guest in studio today. I've obviously got Coach Trent with me today. Good morning, folks. He's not a guest. and um, But I also have a very good close friend and it's Dr. Cliff Knipe. Do I always say your name right? You say it perfect. Perfect. But um, Cliff is a long-term friend. We're going to talk a little bit about his his life today. We're going to talk a little bit about how we know each other and just get to know Cliff and what he does and how's he, how he's involved with fitness and strength training and how that's influenced and affected his life. But I'm going to, I'm going to kind of run down the gamut here real quick. Cliff has a PhD in New Testament. He's kind of a smart guy, just a little bit, you know? Dr. Cliff. Dr. Cliff. Yeah, Doc, that's cool. The, the doctor's in the house. So uh, he has a PhD in New Testament. He is in international ministry, and he serves over in South Africa, which, by the way, guys, it's not a region. It's not a city. It's not a town. It's an actual country. So when you say the word South Africa, for all you Americans out there, for all you guys that listen to this internationally, you're probably thinking, well, duh, (laughs) all you Europeans, and if you're in the Netherlands or wherever you are. But for those of you who listen from America, South Africa is actually a country in Southern Africa. So we'll talk a Very little bit. I'm glad you, you clarified yeah, We'll talk you, a little bit about that. Have you, have y'all ever seen the Ollie G show? No, I don't have yeah, it's, it's, that? Is that for young people? It's an older comedy show. Oh, okay. No, yeah, we're, yeah. we're talking the early aughts. Here. Okay, okay, um, okay. But no, the, the, so Ollie G is this kind of uh, ignorant um, English, you know, hip hop sort of guy. I don't know how you classify him but anyway he goes he urban, somehow urban guy he takes a tour of the of the un and the tour guides you know all serious and he's asking all these ridiculously dumb questions and the joke is that this is sasha baron cohen the actor that he he sells it hard so that he actually gets a real interview and it's the actual representative that does all the tours um and they think he's just filming like a documentary or whatever and he's he's looking around all the country names and all the seats he says but where's Africa? <laughs> that's a continent. And then, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, anyway, just remind me of that. <laughs> but that's, I mean, it's, it's confusing, you know, and we're, we'll talk a little bit about um, South Africa and what you're doing in South Africa. But here's the reason why Cliff's here today. Cliff is on sabbatical, basically, here in the U.S. for several months, taking some time off of ministry work and the work that he does in South Africa. Uh, both of his daughters just recently moved back to the U.S. We'll talk about that a little bit. But also because I like Cliff. Um, I like him as a man. I like him as a person. Um, He's someone who sharpens me. We'll talk a little bit about that because I think that for our listening audience, it's important for everyone to remember that when you talk about being 40 fit, you know, as a term, we're really talking about um, fitness in all areas of our lives. And that means physicality. And that means emotional fitness, and that means social fitness or community fitness. It also means spiritual fitness and cognitive or intelligence, you know, growing your mind too. So our goal here on the podcast is to provide you with information, uh, opportunities, experiences that enrich your life in all of those areas. Um, And I recognize too that having someone who is Um, of a religious mindset that has a certain belief system here that we have lots of listeners who don't have the same belief system. And so, and that's okay too. And we'll try to keep it quite generic. So we won't offend anybody. Yeah, exactly. Because we do live in the PC generation, but um, but we are generation Xers and we don't care about (laughs) PC. That's right. (laughs) But this, this is 40 fit nation. So offend away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So uh, we do keep the profanity to a minimum and we don't have any whiskey in house today, which is really a bummer. Um, But we, I think we do have some Willet around the corner. So we might break that out here in a few minutes, but Basically, first of all, Cliff, welcome to 40 Fit Radio. Thank you, Darren. It's great yeah. to be here. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about how do I know you? How did, let's talk about way back, I want to say like 1985-ish maybe? Or? It, it would be actually more accurately uh, 88. 88? Okay. Okay. So a little bit, so over, what is it? Uh, we're talking about uh, 30 years? Yeah, 31 now. 
31 years ago. So let's talk about how we met and uh, let's talk about what happened in between there. Okay. So I, I started my journey out West. Uh, I was in North Carolina and I decided to do some graduate studies and I came out to Fort Worth to go to a graduate school here. And early on those days, I started doing some work in a local church and Darren pitches up as a, a young guy among others that strapping good looking well, he muscular college student. he wasn't quite there yet wait a minute was, <laughs> did he have hair at that point i think he had hair oh. we both had hair <laughs> we, we both I, had hair we both had more hair <laughs> yeah for sure so yeah so we met each other in that setting and and we spent a little bit of time together and some discipleship programs and just getting to know each other and yeah and that's where we met right yeah and you met your bride did you meet um, uh, Stephanie at, you didn't meet her at Glenview. No, you met her at, no, down South. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so Cliff, how long have you been married? 26 years, 26 years. And, uh, you have three lovely children, uh, children's names and ages. Camille's 23, Natalie's 21 and Wesley's 19. Yeah. And Wesley just to highlight something. Wesley has a condition called uh, fragile X. That's right. right. And he is amazing he's awesome he is so much fun to be with it's a form of um somewhat of a form of autism a little bit yeah it's a cognitive disorder yeah yeah but i tell you what wesley is the guy you want to have around he came to the states recently for some studies up in washington up in uh, washington dc and went through some studies i know that the uh what uh national institutes of health yeah, NIH, what we're doing. And then he got to spend some time here, and he came out to the ranch, and we got him some cowboy boots, and he's probably wearing those cowboy boots Absolutely. right now with Absolutely. his shorts <laughs> in South Africa or his work gear. Yep. Um, but but just a blessing and just so much fun to be around. And both of his girls are awesome, too. His middle girl, Natalie, lives with us right now as she's making her adjustment back into the States. And so um, it's been a blessing to have them. It's been fun reconnecting with these guys. So Cliff and I met years and years and years ago when uh it kind of in church life um he did some discipling with me i would consider cliff to be one of my spiritual mentors um who kind of shaped some of the ways i think about life and about uh, our creator and about um some of the concepts that are around that and then for years uh you know we knew cliff and stephanie were ministering in south africa because y'all been there for 18 years now 17 17 years and um and we would connect with them every now and then. They'd come back to the States. We'd talk to them. We went out to dinner, I believe, or lunch, I believe about a year, two, two years ago. Two years ago. And we kind of reconnected. Now, let's start from kind of there. Yeah. Well, a little, just a little bit before that time, yeah. uh, the great social media. So I kept, yeah, see, that's I, right. I kept seeing the Darren man pop up, and I kept seeing this starting strength program. Well, at that time, I was actually doing a little bit of casual lifting with a friend of mine there in South Africa. But I started getting very interested in this starting strength thing, and Darren was promoting it heavily. And I knew enough about Darren to know that at that time, he was making a pretty big transition out of CrossFit lifestyle into something new. And so it kind of tweaked my interest. And so then when we had when we had lunch and we were here during the, in the States in June two years ago is when I asked Darren to meet me at one of his clinics – and it gave me a little bit of a lesson yeah. on how to squat yeah. and how to deadlift. And uh, yeah, and then the journey began as an online uh, trainee with Darren as a coach. And we've been hard at it, uh, try to stay hard at it. Yeah. With my travel schedule, it's hard to, to keep the consistency. But we started training together, you yeah. know, then. Yeah, so it's been, it's probably been over a year and a half that you've yeah. been online coaching, yeah. at yeah. least. So he is a, he's a client on Barbell Logic Online Coaching. And um, he trains out of South Africa in a town, Wooster. 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 Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about South Africa first. Tell us what you do there okay. and a little bit about the culture and a little bit about the community okay. you serve in. Well, the original work started in Africa in 1991, and that was uh, that was a process of getting into Africa and seeing a need that I felt like I wanted to be part of meeting, and that was training and equipping uh, rural African pastors. So we started traveling all throughout southern, uh, what we call sub-equatorial Africa, uh, doing that. And then uh, that was done here from here in the States. I, w- I was working. I was working with a home builder here in South Lake, and I would travel to Africa quite frequently throughout the year. And then... 
you know, at some point in time, we felt like it was time to kind of relocate home base. And, and so uh, we had done some work in South Africa as well. And so we were just making some really common sense decisions about quality of life, where we wanted to raise our kids because they were young at that time. So we chose South Africa. There was some relational connection there. So we moved to South Africa mostly as a home base and as a springboard into the rest of Africa. So that, that's how we landed up in a little town called Worcester, South Africa. Yeah. So like I said earlier in the podcast, South Africa's a country. Yep. How many countries are in Africa? In 50? Well, uh, I should know that, and that's terrible. Yeah. Don't it's, Ooh, it's yeah. close on, to fifty. It's, yeah, I think it's fifty. Some. Yeah. To be fair, it changes frequently yeah, yeah. in some some areas. <laughs> that's right? true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, even within South Africa, I was telling you the other day, we have two yeah. countries inside South Africa. So we have Swaziland and Lesotho, which are little pancakes inside of South Africa, landlocked by mm. South Africa. They're their own yeah. countries. Yeah. And one of them, Swaziland, is still one of the the only um, fully ruled monarchies in the world. Really? Mm. Yeah. 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 As a king. Yep. And yep. everything. That's cool. Yep. So what's the climate like there? South Africa, if you're from central Texas, where we are yep. uh, in the south, it's nearly identical. You just switch the seasons uh, for the south equator. Flip them, right? Flip them right now. It's cold. It's rainy. It's messy. And uh, in December, January, February, it's just like July, August, September here. Hot, humid, a little and bit you drier. you got no AC. Either. We have no AC. We have no <laughs> central heat. So oh, we build man. fires, but yeah, you know, we're not living in a mud hut. Right, but, right. Uh, you, uh, you, missed, a, you missed one important detail. We don't have lions here. Yeah, you don't have lions. And <laughs> thankfully, where we are, we don't have lions, but yeah, there are right. some in South Africa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the community that you live in would be considered a rural. Yeah. Um, it has wine country around it's it. Wine country. Um, and it has some agriculture around it. And then you're about, what, two hours from Cape Town? Less hour, just over an hour. Uh, okay. We're Cape Town's a major metropolitan city. Great international city. I highly recommend it for anybody that, that yeah. wants to broaden their horizons and do some international travel. It's quite uh, affordable. Yeah, you know, it's a long way away, but it's very affordable, and it's a great city. Right, that's very cool. We're we're thinking about going there next year. We've been talking about welcome opportunity to do some things, and so you've been t tell us uh, in a nutshell because because you know you and I have talked about this on several different occasions what you actually do because there are ministers who do evangelical ministry. In other words, they go out and they spread whatever gospel they're promoting sure. to what they would consider to be unsaved or. Uh, unchurched, unfaithed people mm -hmm. to whatever population they're serving. And then there are people more like you and tell us what you do. Well, I think in the simplest terms that most of the listeners can relate to is I'm a teacher. You know, I love to teach. Obviously my subject matter is, uh, is the Christian life uh, based on the Bible and biblical teachings. Uh, we try to keep that very practical, very relatable. But so we're, we're, we're working with uh, people of the faith and teaching and equipping them to be as highly productive and as highly have a, have a fully developed identity about who they are, you know, in their life so that they can go out and do whatever domain they do it in. And we do a lot of leadership training because we've, you know, we have a real heart to see the church strong and developed. And so, so we're, you know, we're, we're teaching teachers, you know, kind of one of our mottos is to, to teach those who will then turn around and also teach, yeah. you know, so, yeah. that, you know, your organization's called Equippers International, which is perfect. Yeah. You're equipping those who are going to equip others. That's right. And it's international. That's right. You not only serve in Africa and in South Africa, but tell us a little bit about where you're going across well, the world. We've been in about, I personally have been in about 18 different African countries, and in the last five to seven years, the doors have opened up. We're doing more in South America now, in Brazil, uh, in Europe, several countries in Europe, and in India. Uh, so the, the horizons are broadening for us. And so we're just uh, following those steps as they lead. And so we, we do have a, an international international footprint in what we do. Sure, sure. And so when you, you know, in our listening audience, as I said earlier, I know we've got a lot of different religions, a lot of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Some people are Christians, some people are non-Christians, mm -hmm. Muslims. We've got all these different sure. lis listeners in our audience. But, but let me just say this. If you've never met a guy like Cliff and a, and a lady like Stephanie, then you really don't know what their version of Christianity really looks like. And it's a very practical but yet biblically based lifestyle. But I think that a lot of people, including maybe some of our audience, including myself over the years, have kind of gotten burned by modern religion, dogma in religion, um, certain, certain belief systems that are not consistent with, with maybe biblical truths, um, and how those have been interpreted into today's world. Um, but I just want to say that, that when you meet Cliff, 
you you can honestly just get a feel. You immediately get a feel for the fact that uh, he strongly believes in what he believes. But it's a real practical lifestyle. It's 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 as practical and as relational as it can be. Absolutely. And it's very non-religiosity. Or or is that a word? That's one of the highest religi- compliments Ossity. you could have paid me. Yes. Well, rel- yes. religiosity yeah. is not a word. It is. Well, it well, is a word. You I know, just made it up. I think. I think. You know. Very. Reli- very non-religious. Yeah. yeah. I. Th- I think that uh, what you're describing is what we see a lot of times in the in the American suburbs, especially in the South. Yeah. Right. It's it's a any, lifestyle any, anywhere. It's yeah. a lifestyle that. Um, well, you know, the South is heavily Christian. It's the yeah, Bible right. Belt, right? Yeah, right, yeah, right. And um, it, it's a uh, it's a culture in which. Um, Church is very prevalent, yeah. but it also can be somewhat of a sheltered culture, right? There's not necessarily going out into in, in meeting with different peoples of different faiths of different cultures, and uh, and reconciling your faith with the rest of the world. It's it can be a little cloistered sometimes. Yeah. So I think yeah. I think Cliff uh, is, is kind of the opposite of that. You're living in a, a completely different world. Yeah, than that. yeah. We yeah. Hope, we hope we are. Yeah. Well, no, I know you are. I mean, um, and I think that, that it's refreshing. It's, uh, I mean, I hate to use the word, you're a professional pastor, but, but this is your calling, obviously it's something yeah. you've done for years. Um, let's talk a little bit about, well, let's, let's stay here for just a few minutes. And, and so in your, in your ministry work and the work that you do, you know, you think about it, guys, this guy has a job just like anybody else. The only difference is he kind of sets his schedule in regards to where he's going to be in what country, in what neighborhood, in what, um, uh, community that you're serving in at that time. He's got a schedule that he keeps, but how do you, I mean, I'm going to ask the obvious question. How do you make a living? I mean, because I know you don't get, I know, I know you do not receive, um, any association foundation or particular church support from a church, but you've chosen that methodology. You've chosen that for a reason and purpose. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we're, we're what you would call a traditional faith-based ministry organization we ha- we do have an organization and so we fundraise and you know we go out and try to find like-minded people and like-hearted people that you know believe in what we believe in and want to sow financially into us to be able to make our mission in our ministry a possibility you know that's our personal life as well as all our travels you know those those look like conferences and outreaches and different types and different things in different parts of, parts of the world so you know, we're fully funded 100% by the personal gifts of individuals um, that, that support us financially. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Very refreshingly cool and um, uh, hard, but refreshingly cool. So let's talk about hard a little bit. Yeah. Let's talk about voluntary hardship. Let's talk about training. Absolutely. Um, so you've been doing starting strength for about a year and a half, almost uh, two years. And I've been coaching you online, and, and you've been all over the world during that time. You started, stopped, started, stopped, stopped, started. <laughs> I'm not we've the gone model. backwards, we've gone forwards, we've gone. But in the midst of all that, you've had several life deloads, you've had triple D deloads, you've had work deloads, you've had back injury deloads. Yep. But here's the beautiful thing. You're still stronger than you were before. Absolutely. You're st- you, you, you said the other day, you at a conference, someone was saying to you that uh, you just, wow, you look so fit, man. You look so... But but why starting strength and why why uh, step into the endeavor of trying to get fit again? Yeah. Um, how old are you? I'm 55 this year. So, yeah. so he fits in the 40 Fit Nation. Yep. <laughs> so um, you're 55. Um, I know you've been a lifetime athlete. Talk a little yeah. bit about your, your background as an athlete and then why starting strength and yeah. why fitness in general. Yeah. Well, like I say, I've always been an athlete. I've always been active and uh, always done some type of sporting exercise, uh, fitness, and, you know, I think I came to the point and it was just a convergence uh, at the right time at the right place when I found Barbell Logic and I started and you said earlier and thank you for the compliment. I'm an intelligent person. Yeah. And sure. I, I just started looking. You're a thinker. Yeah, I'm a thinker. So I started looking at the website and going into the YouTube videos because I respected you primarily for what you were doing. And I saw I'm, you. Were, I'm very respectable. Uh, you are a respectable person. Let's get that straight. <laughs> uh, and and a passionate person. Yes. And contagious. And so I respected you and I said, okay, I'm going to see what D's up to. Yeah. And as I gave it an honest look and started looking at what it was all about, it just appealed to me. It appealed to my personality. It appealed to my, my lifetime goals. Be honest with you. We'll talk about those in just a minute. And, and so I just loved everything about it. Yeah. You know, I loved, I loved the fact that it was fluid, you know, it, it had, it had a, you were going somewhere, but you could also adjust, Right. you know, and you could, yeah, you, you could increase and, and you could adjust and you could. And the biggest thing, you know, that I found is that it brings results. 
Yeah. Un- unlike yeah. really, and I'm not yeah. just blowing smoke for the yeah. 45th nation. Yeah. I'm telling you, it it just produced results like nothing else I'd ever experienced. Right. right. In fitness. Yeah. No, and I and I think that's what what a lot of people find uh, in our community is that, you know, my number one goal for for doing this podcast has always been to bring to our community things that are, you know, number one, the, we, we use science and reason and logic and we use results and then we use um, some evidence-based type training. And then along with that, we use some anecdotal training in regards to our own experiential evidence, our own individual mm-hmm. experience. And then myself as a practitioner and Trent's and other content experts and other people from the community come in. So three things really, and that is science and evidence you know, and then anecdotal evidence, also our own experience, and then the experience of the community and content experts that we value their opinions. And so when you bring all those three, those three things together, what you end up getting is you get you end up getting a fitness program that yeah. works. Yeah. And that's the goal. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that barbell training, that what we recommend here is the only way, but I would say that it's the most effective way. Mm-hmm. And our goal is to promote ideas and concepts and principles that people can start today if they're 40 plus or if they're 30 plus, wherever, yeah. and they can do them for the rest of their life. Right. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up that word anecdotal because that was one of the things on my mind coming into this session. I just wanted to quickly share. Yeah. So I was just thinking about what I would share in my context, which I think, which I would hope could relate to anybody's context. Sure. And that is a, a, an anecdote out of the Bible of Joshua. You know, Joshua was a young man before the children of Israel went into the promised land, and he and Caleb were the only ones that spied out the land positively. So they come back, but then the Israelites had fear, so they, they went around the desert for 40 years. But then there's this beautiful verse in Joshua where 45 years later, okay, so Joshua's 40 years old before they go into the land. Well, then they wonder for 45 years. So now he's 85 years old. Wow. And he makes this statement, I am still as strong today as I was the day that Moses sent me into the land to spy it out. 45, awesome. 45 years later, he's 85. Yeah. And he says, as my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going in and going out. Wow. <laughs> that's still, power- you got goosebumps. Uh, no, that's a, power- that's <laughs> right. a powerful statement. Now, who, who can say that at 85 years old? Say, I am as strong today as I was 45 years ago. Right. And I, I read that for war and for coming in and going out. What that tells me is, for my profession, right, my responsibility, right. my duties, yep. and for my normal life, right, right, no, that's and, great, and that's where I got passionate about strength, because yeah. I was like, I want to do what's in my heart, passionate to do. Sure, every other person should have the same passion, I believe, and you want to do it for the rest of your life. Well, and we talked about you know, this. We talked about this last night at dinner because we ate dinner together, and we were talking about being good stewards, and and that being good stewardship, and and whether you think about this from a, a religious context or not, yeah. Being a good steward of your possessions, of your physical body, yep. of your intellectual body, of your emotional well-being, of your finances, whatever Anything. it is, you know, we're, we, we all do better. And we believe that most of these people in this room believe that we're called to be good stewards of what we've been given or what we've earned. And, and yet at the same time, that there's so many corollaries between the physical, your physical health and your spiritual and emotional yes. and mental health. Yeah. There's I, so many corollaries. I, I mean, reminded you did a- in the introduction, uh, I, I think one of the most powerful things that uh, Mark Ripito has ever written is just that the first page of starting strength, basic barbell training, humans are not physically normal in the absence of hard physical training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. it is the thing which returns you to normal. Exactly. And, and I think it's really interesting that, you know, the more that you learn about ancient cultures and religions, even pre-Christian, humans have long realized that there's a, a connection between physical health, spiritual health, mental health, and you yep. cannot separate them. That's right. But That's we right. try to do that. Yeah. And oh, we try yeah. to do yeah. that all the time. We try to compartmentalize and separate those in our in our Western culture. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think back to my wife was a yoga instructor for several years, and um, she learned a little bit about Ayurveda, which is part of the the culture that yoga came out of and the in the ayurvedic tradition they view people along you know kind of in in sort of um uh you could think about them like a myers-briggs test right there's yeah, people yeah, with yeah, different sure. different personality, personality types yep. but but the way that they they visualize that it wasn't just personality you have a certain type that's dominant that is not just your personality but also is your your physical build 
what you look like physically, sure. your frame, your your performance, right? Are you a are you an endurance guy, a runner, a strong guy, very grounded? And so anyway, the, so people for many thousands of years have drawn this this um, you know this holistic yeah. connection, right? Absolutely, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can separate. I don't think you can separate the human experience from the physical, spiritual, emotional component, you know, cognitive or, you know, we think of emotions and, and, and intellect very similar, but, but from, from that whole, that, that whole person, you can't separate the three. No. And, and if you're, if you're not investing in all three, yeah, then you're missing the boat. I mean, right. you really are. And so, so, but that's awesome, Cliff, what you shared. I mean, and, and that's, that's your reasoning. Yeah. That's your reason why you, you picked up the barbell. Or you picked up getting back active yep. and getting involved and taking care of your body again. Yep. So tell us, I mean, you've been obviously in between this last year and a half, almost two year um, span, lifespan time, you have traveled all over the world. So we've started and stopped a lot. Yep. But guess what we always do? We always go back to the gym. That's right. I might have to deload you <laughs> based on how long you're gone, but we always go back to the gym. Absolutely. And you have taken the opportunity to, to train in some countries where you had resources yeah. and facilities. Yeah. Um, uh, but now you're in the States. You've got a good gym. You can train here, right here at my gym. Thank you very while much. While you're in town. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it's for. But um, so tell me a little bit about how you correlate your physical fitness with your spiritual fitness and the, and the corollary there too. Ooh, okay, that's an unexpected question. How you correlate? I know because we didn't. I didn't give you any questions. <laughs> um, well, you know, I did think about that too in preparation for this time, and you know, uh, you don't want to sound corny, you know, uh, but there is so much correlation. Uh, one correlation I thought about was faith. Okay, any any spiritual endeavor, no matter what your inclination is, is going to have faith based into it, and this program is a faith based program. You have to do the lifts. You have to follow the program. You, you know, I don't know how many times Darren kept telling me, FTP, FTP, you know, just follow the program by faith. Just do the progression, do the reps, get them in and work on the technique, you know, and so, and the result will come. Forget about how you feel. That's right. Forget about how your day went. That's Forget right. Forget about how your lifts went. That's right. If you just step into the gym, the, the key to success in any fitness program is yep. consistency, Stepping into the gym, stepping into whatever the the rec, the arena is. Yep. If you're a runner, stepping onto your running course. If you're a swimmer, stepping into the pool. Wherever you're going, yep. you have to apply consistent effort. Yep. And I think that's very similar to the Christian walk, yeah. or to a, or or to a spiritual walk. Yeah. You have to apply consistent effort. Yeah. You know, yeah. and there's a lot of faith yeah. that's required in both of those areas. Yeah. Um, and they both produce results. Yeah. Look, and let's just, be, let's just be painfully practical about it since we talked about how we're practical people in our faith. We're all practical in life. The bottom line is we all want to get up every day and feel good. We yes. want to be happy. Yeah. We want to have positive thoughts. You know, it's, it, each domain is the mental. It, that means mental well-being, healthy, happy, yep. you know, well-adjusted. Sense of well-being. Financial yeah. domain, okay? Be, not about being rich, but it's a lot better to have more than less. Yeah. Yeah, I used to so, tell people, I, you know— uh, wealth doesn't bring you happiness, but neither does poverty. No, it doesn't. Right. <laughs> yeah. So one of my great yeah. mentors in life, you know, who was a very well off man and went into ministry later on in life. I had a conversation with him one time and I wanted the real secret to wealth. And I said, you know, just give it to me, lay it on me. Yeah. And in his wise South Texan accent, he said, well, I've lived without money and I've lived with it. And I'll tell you, life's a lot better with it. <laughs> It's, it's, I love you know, it. I love and it. So, Painfully true. And in the, yeah. in the physical domain, yeah. stronger is better than weaker. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you start your day, you feel better. Yeah. And you know, who doesn't want to feel that? And I think people just don't understand how that correlates over to all, all the domains of life. Right. You know, if you're not feeling right, you can correct that no matter what domain you're in. Yep. We have the ability. We can exert intentionality into whatever. It takes discipline. Yep. But you just got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you see the results. Absolutely. But you don't see the results until you do it. Right. That's right. Yeah, so much a little sowing to get a little reaping. So yeah. much of what we talk about is is process. You yeah. know, it, it's not the the end result of strength training is not nearly as important as the process of strength yeah. training. Yeah. And uh, just showing up and setting that little goal is I'm going to go in and I'm going to lift 5 more pounds than I did last time. Yep. Just 5. 5 more pounds. You can hold it in your hand. That's 5 yep. pounds. That's yeah. all I got to do. Yeah. And uh, you you set that little goal and you tackle it and you do it. And you set the next one, 
and you do it and you do it. And all of a sudden you're strung together a month of goals that you've, you've set and accomplished. And it, that might be for a lot of people, something they have, haven't done in ever, yeah, you know, absolutely. And now they can look at themselves and say, ah, okay, well I can do that. Well, I can, I can set, I can save 50 yeah. bucks this month or whatever it is. Right. Or, or, or no, it correlates it into another compartment of your life. It, it, those, those life skills and those habits then roll over into other the other compartments of your life. Absolutely. Being, being physically disciplined means that you can more easily be financially disciplined, means you can be more easily uh, spiritually disciplined. Mm -hmm. Their habits are habits. That's right. And the habit of discipline is not limited to one domain. It has domainal prevalence. It can go anywhere. And I think that's one of the keys. One of the things we talk to on our podcast, uh, talk about on our podcast all the time, is voluntary hardship. The ability to do something that you don't necessarily have to do, and in some cases you don't want to do, but you make yourself do it anyway because you know it is the best thing to do. That's very, that, that is a common theme throughout physical health, spiritual health, financial health, whatever That's you want right. to talk about. It is a common theme. The takeaway for you guys out there in our listening audience and for ourselves in this studio is basically this. If you constantly avoid doing the hard, then you never reap the benefit of what the hard produces. That's right. And so if you're constantly avoid taking the, the easy road, constantly taking the easy path, the, you know, then you're, you always get the results of that path. Everybody's on that path. Right. Plain and simple, you know, nine out of 10 people out in the, out in the world are on that path. But what about that one person who decides, um, I don't want to be on that path. I'm willing to do the hard because I know the hard yields a better result mm -hmm. in whatever it's in, you know, sure. and, uh, we see that in our gyms. Absolutely. We see that we, you see that in your ministry. Absolutely. And I see that in my practice life, treating my patients. No one wants to come in and, and let me crank on their shoulder or crank on their back or, or, or do the exercise or, or get treatment. But you know what? At the end of the road, at the end of that process, which the process never actually ends, like you said, it's just a constant uh, maturation and development over time. But, it, but through that process, they become better. Yeah. And whatever yeah. it is, they become better. So I'm, I'm really curious to know when you go out and – work with other ministers, um, what are the kinds of conversations that you're having with them? What are the types of things that you're teaching them? I, I, I assume that, and actually, one other thing would be interesting to know is what kind of expectations do they have when they first start working with you? And maybe what are some surprises that they find? Well, that's, that's a good question, Trent. And obviously, on one side, we could become, you know, really technical about the Christian faith, which I think in this setting, maybe we don't want to do specifically. But I think it also has to do with where in the world we are, you know, uh, we mostly go into what, uh, what Americans would call more underprivileged areas. So I think at first, uh, unfortunately, what a lot of those people in those settings do is they would look to you what they can get from you. Sure. You know, they're looking for a financial, you know, sugar daddy, looking mm -hmm. for an American coming in that might, you know, be able to help them and financially, which, you know, that's not one of our big priorities is to set up, you know, and help people in that regard. But I think once we develop relationship and once we actually start, you know, communicating and talking and working with guys and girls, you know, um, what I what I want to get to is ultimately uh, on, a, in, on a Christian basis, but in a general way is character development, you sure. know, because, yeah. you know, and that, that's another thing that I like about this program is I sense integrity in the program. Yeah. You know, I sense integrity. And another thing I want to mention. It's honest, and I and I sense community, yeah. and that's something I really want to bring out strongly because we're big in developing community. Mm. I mean, obviously, that's what church or any religious experience sure. usually is, unless you're going to be a monk up on a hill somewhere. But it's community based because within the community, you can receive the encouragement, you can receive the that a boy that you need sometimes, the knowledge, and you can receive the, wisdom. The, the smack that the you smack need. that you need yeah, exactly. exactly so you get all those things you know so that's the kind of thing that we're giving and taking with the people that we're working a lot with you know uh yeah so so do, do you find that um a lot of these communities are lacking in leadership and fatherhood motherhood ab absolutely i mean leadership is a void i mean it, it's just a black void in the world you know good leaders uh, men and women of integrity that do the right thing for the right reason mostly for the benefit of others and not themselves. You know, these are all principles that we just hammer over and over again, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, that's where the only fruit is going to remain, you right. know, if it, where other people are actually bettered, you know, yep. than, than you, than yourself. Sure. You sure. Know? 
because that for yourself works its way out, you know, yep. Absolutely. in the end. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think those principles are, are universal principles to, um, to use a term. I mean, everything that you're talking about is specific to your work within the Christian community and within the Christian faith. Mm. But all of those principles are principles that they, they work. Absolutely. They just work. You know, I have a friend, he's, 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 he's not religious. Um, he's, he's, he doesn't have, uh, uh, Christianity as his faith or any, any faith. He has some faith, but it's, it's, and more, we all do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Every, well, you got to have faith in something. Um, but he has, you know, his own belief system. But one of the things he said to me the other day, uh, not the other day, but years ago, we were talking and uh, we were just talking about, you know, the differences in religions and, and the way we think as humans and, we're trying to, you know, more intellectualize it in this conversation we were having. And he said, you know what? I do this because it works, Darren. It works. It doesn't war. It doesn't work to war against another person. Right. It doesn't work to take another person's possessions as your own when it's not your own. Right. See, it just doesn't work. And, um, and there are a lot of natural laws that exist and w- w- you know, and, and a lot of people have different reasons for believing in those natural mm-hmm. laws. Um, some people, it's a faith based reason. Some people it's because it's, it's what they learned and it worked. Yeah. But I think that ultimately in what you do, you're also bringing to those people groups, um, things that work. This works. That's right. You know, if you apply these principles and you can develop the community, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people would say, well, you're, you know, you're proselytizing or you're promoting religion or whatever. But if people are bettered yeah. by it, if people are bettered, I used to always tell people, if this is my belief system and I'm a better dad and I'm a better businessman and I'm a better husband and I'm a better friend and I'm a better leader in my community, what does it matter? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> And if you, you think know? about it, isn't all of the fabric of society built on the premise of whatever you're doing, you're doing it to make somebody else better? Right. I mean, w- well, if you're a mechanic, you want somebody to have a reliable car so sure. they can have trustworthy transportation. I mean, it's a form you of know, altruism, I mean, in, in uh, a way. I mean, we don't go around destroying other people. Right, right, that's, exactly. <laughs> right, that's right. Not a reprodu- that's not a reproducible thing. It well, yeah. It's not sustainable. Well, even, you know, if, if we, uh, even if you, you pull the religious thread away from Western culture, we're built on this idea of the good life, right? right the that's right. philosophy ultimately was driving at what identifying what is the good life and then how do we live it how do we get there right. and that was part of what the greeks did so many years ago that's right as they were trying to figure out aristotle and plato and socrates they were trying to get at um well if if we if we throw away the gods for a second or put them to the side right can we can we reason um a, a system of values and morals that produces a good life Right. And so we've got it. And I I think ultimately, if you look at at, um, any society, the value systems come down to they're either, you know, ordained by God, by by a uh, higher power or they're intuited. They're emergent from a system of logic and reasoning, thinking about how do you make the world a better place? How do you be a better person in it? That's right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, man, we got anything else? Yeah. So I wanted to ask. since this is 40 fit radio and this is 40 fit nation, um, you know, I, I am a millennial. I'm right smack dab in the millennial generation. Right. And one of the things that we were talking about at lunch earlier today is that, uh, we see today a lot of young men grasping for significance in manhood. Right. What did you say, Darren? They're, they're growing the beards and wearing the flannel and the red wing boots. With the but, red wing boot, if, but they picked but, up an axe and cut yeah, their hand off. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Chop their toe. They're not actually, they, they look like a lumberjack, but that's about it. They're, yeah. they're in pursuit of substance, but they don't have substance yet. Right. Yeah. right. And so what, what would you say to people who um, are trying to step up and be leaders in their community and guiding the younger generations? What can the younger generations learn? What are some of the lessons that you've learned in your line of work? that you can share with, um, with everyone else in the 40 fit nation. Well, you know, Darren's, I think articulated it pretty, pretty clearly already in the domain of fitness and the domain of life is doing what's not comfortable. You know, you, it's character. We talked about it at lunch, you know, when, when I, and I put it this way, you know, when you get into the character zone, most people bail, you know, because they either don't want to suffer. They don't want to be challenged. They don't want to do the hard thing. They don't want to be confronted with their own weakness and their own inse- ins- vulnerable. insecurity, vulnerability. vulnerability. Sure. You know, so I'm I'm always encouraging those in leadership 
to model those things for people they want to lead, you know? And I think for those of us, and, and, and we're all on a journey. It's not that we've arrived, you know? No. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're definitely flawed. We are flawed. But but we've learned some things. Yeah. And so, you know, again, that mentor of mine, you know, he always taught me, you need to always have a hand back behind you pulling somebody else up from the millennial generation or whatever generations behind you, Sure, you know? And so we just got to be willing to be uh, relational and to be connected to people on an authentic level to show who we really are and to also be willing to share the things we've learned and to be able to walk with them through the process, you know, whatever that looks like. Sure. You know? So that sure. that's, you know, it's just a very highly relational thing for me. Sure. It, yeah. it doesn't do me a lot of good just to shout at a guy and throw verses or throw concepts or throw anything at him, you know, get under the bar with him and help him get it lifted, you know, right. yeah. whatever you got to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. We need that t-shirt. Get into the bar and help him get it lifted. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, there you I go. Love it. I mean, yeah. no, I mean, I yeah. mean, but that's that same concept is is true with um, it. It rings true with with a lot of things, and it's it's um, people follow leaders who lead. That's right. Um, some people, unfortunately, follow leaders sometimes who don't necessarily lead in an appropriate manner, but that leadership will wane. That leadership will eventually wane. And people, people want genuine leadership. They want genuine character. And those, those traits or the traits of, you know, whatever you want to call it, patience, long suffering, honesty, integrity, um, internal strength, um, uh, caring for others, being empathetic, being sympathetic, all those different yeah. traits or, or personality traits or, or task tests, not as good, good word, but traits, yeah. um, they're all developed through the heart. Mm-hmm. They're all developed through the heart. Yeah. And as we age, we recognize how much harder it becomes. Yeah. It's not easier today than it was 10 or 15 years ago for me to step into the gym. It's harder. Yeah. But it brings great value. Yeah. It brings great, great yeah. value. And I think that that's true with a lot of things in life, that the hard generates the best product. Um, it generates the best results. And I think for the younger generation – or younger men and women, um, uh, the the best thing that we can teach them is to do the hard and to uh, learn how to do things that you don't want to do because the process has value right? and the journey has value. And we look back over our lives. I know you and I do, Cliff. We look back over our lives and realize that all the good things came from the hard stuff. That's right. Yeah. It didn't yeah. come from the easy stuff. No. It came from the hard stuff. Yeah. You know, the best PRs, under the bar and the best fitness came from the hard, you know, the best, um, uh, uh, financial, uh, status came from the hard, you know, from saving or being a good steward and all those things, uh, those principles are, are very applicable um, to each other. Sure. So. so Cliff, what are some of the things you do besides barbell training? What are some of your daily habits and practices that, that keep you grounded? Well, um, I have, a. I believe in what some call it a, a daily office. I have a process by which I practice uh, contemplation and meditation uh, on, on incremental processes throughout the day. I think that's important. Uh, a lot of studies been done on that, quieting ourselves, you know, anchoring ourselves. I have a, a, a daily process of study and reading and, and, and writing, you know, uh, training materials and teachings and, and whatever. Uh, uh, fitness, you know, obviously my training, but but other forms of, of casual recreational fitness, uh, relational connection with people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, first and foremost, my wife, you know, spending good quality time with her and other people, you know, developing relationships, because I think it's in relationships that we get challenged. We get, you know, we get, you know, uh, Darren's got the sign in his, his living room is iron sharpens iron, you know, one sure. man sharpens the other. So those are some things to me that keep me grounded. Sure. You know, do you start your day off with, with meditation yep. or study? I or? do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's difficult Excellent. now in Darren's house, you know, I'm living in his house. It's the dogs <laughs> everywhere. <and I'm> right. <laughs> The news no, is joking. on. The dogs are on. Yeah. I wake up. I wake up with a with a microphone in my hand and a set of headphones on. I walk in. Hey, good morning, Cliff. No, I don't do that. But but no, it's a little chaotic right now. Yeah. But that's that's okay too. But yeah. no, I do see him. I I walked in the other day and he was he was sitting in our in one of our uh, recliner chairs and he was studying. So um, no, Cliff's a real deal, man. He's a real deal, and he lives it. He he practices. Um, what he promotes, and um, he's the real deal. It's relational. Number one, he wants to see the better men of all people in every community that he serves. Yeah. That's the key, you know. Yeah. And and fitness is part of that. Um, that's why 
he he's active in that and he promotes that. I think eventually he'd like to become a starting strength coach someday. I would he'd like to promote yeah. that down in South Africa or wherever he is. Um, but I know he sees the value in the, the corollaries there between being physically fit and spiritually fit. And um, I think it was good to have him on the podcast today and talk a little bit about those things. So Cliff, how can people um, connect with you and what you do if they'd like to do that? If they'd like to find out more about you, uh, do you have the Instagrams and do you have the Facebooks? And yeah, what, absolutely, what are you? absolutely. I mean, the first point of contact would be a website, okay, you know, which is equippersa.com. Equippers, S-A. Dot com. S is so, in Sam, so A is in Apple. Two P's and two S's. Got it. Right. Yeah. S- okay. Equippers, S-A dot com. From there, you can springboard over into the Facebook page, uh, you know, so you can find you can find us quite easily. Okay. Yeah. You're on Instagram too? Uh, yes, on what, Instagram. What is that? At? Uh, well, my um, I'm just trying to think now. I have to, because the, the, the podcast is through at Talking About Jesus. Got it. And so you can find us there. Okay. And you can subscribe to the podcast. Um, yeah. There's those right. main ways. Cool. And of course, as always, we will uh, drop those links in the show notes. So yeah. if you right. want to go follow Cliff right. there, you can do that. Cool. Cool. Well, I say we sign off, man. Take us out, Trent. All right. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for joining the 40 Fit Nation. You know where to find Cliff. Check out the show notes. You also know where to find 40 Fit Radio at 40 Fit Radio on Instagram, or also at 40fit.com if you want to come check out the website, where you can also read the show notes. And we are also at 40 Fit Masters Community on Facebook. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. We will have a new Facebook group coming out very soon. We'll, we'll keep you posted about that here on the podcast when that is launched. The 40 Fit Nation. Right? The 40 Fit Nation. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's so we'll, cool. we'll keep you posted when that is up and running. In the meantime, go out and train. Um, You heard Cliff's call to action. Go out and be a leader. Go do the hard and be an example for the people around you in your life. Thanks again for joining the 40 Fit Nation. Thanks for joining 40 Fit Radio. See you next week. Later, guys.